This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the first of hopefully a few Duel Links videos that I'm going to be doing for the channel. Now, I'm not going to be doing a lot of them. I'll probably be doing maybe two a week. But for this video, I'm going to be doing some PvP ladder climbing, just because it's something that I felt like was worthwhile to do. And I'm going to be doing it with this uh, Bare Bones GB deck. I've only been playing Duel Links for eight days at this point, um, in terms of, like, logged in days. Uh, so, like, the Thursday before the Steam release was when I actually started playing. I started playing on mobile, so I'd have an account ready to at least transfer over to the Steam release version so I could play on PC a little bit more. And I've been playing a good bit. I've been grinding a lot and been spending a lot of time in Duel Links because I've been sick a lot over the past week. So I just had a lot of time on my hands. Uh, but so I haven't been throwing a lot of money into this game. I've actually spent very little on it just to sort of expedite the process of getting to like impenetrable attacks and stuff. But I still have a long way to go in terms of getting actual cards. So bear with me on that one. But so I'm playing GBs uh, because it's very easy to get. It's very easy to get all the core pieces for it. Uh, like very early on with minimal uh, gem investment. But also... Uh, it's very easy to play in terms of uh, you can take advantage of people in the ranked pool, especially if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! veteran. If you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! veteran, you seem to have such an unfair advantage in this game because you take advantage of little tricks that people don't really pay attention to, like interactions in the damage step and stuff like that. Um, and with the best card in the game being enemy controller, that's really powerful, Like especially since you see there's triple rush recklessly in my deck, to sort of be a pseudo trap, but also just to take advantage of people. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be playing PvP. I'll probably do three to five games, try to keep the video around 20 minutes in length, somewhere around there. And I'm at Platinum Rank 3. I'll be trying to go up a rank during this video. Uh, as well as... Um, as well as... Uh, da, 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 da. My face cam can't be used for this. Because it takes up too much of my uh, of my RAM allocation, uh, trying to film with the face cam on, as well as play Duel Links. Uh, so just another reason why I need to upgrade my PC uh, to something a bit better off. Even now, it's probably still going to struggle. Uh, but okay, I'm going second. I'm playing mine as my uh, as my legendary duelist that I'm trying to level up. Uh, but I'm also using Aroma Strategy as the skill, because using Aroma Strategy, like, to see what the next card on top of my deck is for the GB matchup, or for the GB deck in general, it's just super valuable. Uh, because, like, knowing that I'm going to draw Econ, I can already be planning what my next turn is. Um, did he just straight up open Poly in, like, three Ojamas? Oh, just two? Okay. So, Ojama Knight, so I don't get to use two of my... Uh, of my spell and tra of my monster card zones, but that's fine. I can set Laquarie, I can set my impenetrable attacks, I can use it um, on the Laquarie when he tries to kill it with this Ojama Knight, and then from there I can tag into Mermelo. So I really like GBs, even though it is technically a tier 3 deck. Uh, GBs is very interesting in that it's, um, like I said in the little deck portion, it's very easy to get early on which is a benefit, obviously. Uh, it's very good for stage grinding as well uh, because it allows you to perform a lot of special summons. It has tribute summons built into the archetype um, and stuff like that. But also, it's um, it's really, like, it takes losses to Ancient Gears and to Sacred Phoenix in ranked in terms of, like, tier 3 decks. But... It's, uh, it's like, really good because Bestiari and Mermillo can, in theory, out any monster in the game. Oh, I'm gonna have to confirm every one of these. Ojama Black, Ojama Yellow. Alright, well, he's already gotten... He, ooh, that, that fitting room was really good. Thank God there's only three zones. But so, uh, yeah, like I said, like, being a Yu-Gi-Oh! veteran and coming into this game, like, things seem very just lopsided in my advantage in terms of, like, the things that I'm going to take advantage of during these games. Um, activate the effect of a card into their turn. Hmm. Well, no. I guess I guess I don't care about that. Or I guess that's not going to be something that happens. So, I can flip this. I can attack over the Ojama Yellow. Um, I can rush recklessly, because that'll put me at 1100. I've got the, the Econ and the Impenetrable um, down. So, yeah, so I'll do this, then I'll tag into Bestiari, which can then out the Ojama Country, which is also just kind of insane when you think about it. Uh, the fact that this deck has built-in ways to out people's, like, skills. 
like, to out-duelist skills is actually pretty wild. Because, uh, like, people start with these free plus ones for, like, Ojama Country and shit like that. But, like, you just get to counter that. And that's pretty wild. Uh, but so, we'll go to intern. And I will tag my Lucori out into Bestiari to pop Ojama Country. And we'll see if he has another one. But that will basically turn these into zero zeros. And then everything will have to go into defense mode if he doesn't want to take, like, large amounts of damage. And so then things will just be in my favor because I can start pinging my monsters into, uh, into his defense position stuff to tag out my GBs freely, essentially. But so that's that. I've got Econ, I've got the Impenetrable Attack set, and so I just need to utilize those to the fullest. Econ is the best card in this game right now, it seems, and people misplay with it like crazy. <laughs> it's actually kind of insane. Uh, people just don't respect like the plays you can make with it. Okay, so yeah, see? I just I literally outed his entire strategy just with a Bestiari. And that's kind of wild. Like, even for a tier 3 deck, this deck is, like, still really good at playing through um, your opponent's, like, shit. I'll set this Draining Shield. Um, I'm drawing a Laquari next turn, but I'm actually not, because I'm going to be tagging out into Mermelo to pop the Ojama Knight. I'm going to kill the Ojama Black. I can tag into, um, into Mermelo to pop Ojama Knight, get access to my zones back. And then uh, the... Impenetrable attack and the draining shield are going to be utilized as protection for that Mermelo. As well as the Econ. That Mer There's no way in hell that Mermelo dies. No way. There's no way this Mermelo dies. It, it's it's going to live to see a day. Um, and now I have Windstorm on top of my deck. Okay, valuable information to know if my deck doesn't get shuffled by next turn. The, the information that it gives, that extra little bit of information is just such a huge advantage. It's such a huge thing for somebody that knows how GBs operates because specifically like in a more like in a more simplified game state of where you're having to fight through like I don't know like say like some token generating deck or maybe like the uh, the uh, thousand energy deck or the Venus deck, whatever the the human wave tactics deck. If you're if you know what card is on top of your deck and you have like two GBs out, you can just tag them out for each other just for the just for the reasoning of doing nothing but shuffling your deck, just to get a card specifically on top of your deck that you want to draw, um, and then you specifically don't tag out certain GBs even though you saved them and can proc their tag out effects because you know what you're drawing. Um, like there's there's a bunch of things that go into into alignment uh, for you for making it really good. So let's see, I can put Dimikari on board and just pressure him, because Dimikari can attack twice. So that's pretty good. Dimikari is also just not small, but it also attacks twice. That's actually, <laughs> it's actually kind of ridiculous. Um, there's no Augustus in my deck because he's a brick, unfortunately. If, uh, if Respite was better, then I'd probably be playing Augustus. I originally did start out playing Respite and a lot more heavy of a GB lineup so that I could like just turbo to the few traps that I did have. Like, I only had, like, one Impenetrable Attack, a Metal Morph, and three Econ. <laughs> and so I was playing a ton of GBs. Like, uh, like the most I had of every single copy. Um, and I was also uh, I was also playing Respite um, at three, because Respite can shuffle back Respite. And I was trying to just turbo into these cards. Uh, but it didn't end up working out. It was just, it's just better to have these. Um, so, Ojama Green, is that it? This is the second game, right? I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, polymerization. All right. Uh, I'm not entirely sure because I've tried to film this video a couple of times, uh, trying to do the webcam to try and get the face cam to work with my green screen behind me. But like I said, computer does not have the proper RAM ca uh, capabilities to run Steam, Dual Links, and OBS, and a webcam at the same time. That's just too much. Ojama King. Go Ojama, fuse and form Ojama King. No, please. Oh, he's just standing on a cliff. I'll skip that cutscene. All right. Um, so I could take this. Um, I could also just ping into it and kill it with a Mermillo. Um, considering he just took like a minus three to go into it. Uh, the enchanted fitting room, one for one. And yeah, this, this was just a bad Ojama King. A horrid Ojama King, in fact, even. Or I could just econ it into attack mode and hit it. That's also another option. Because he has no other cards, so there's no reason for me to respect anything else. Uh, but so we'll just turn this to attack mode. 
Then we'll poke it with Dimakari, and Dimakari by himself does 3200 damage here. Uh, so even if this attack wasn't game, it is definitely game now. So that's fine. Didn't have to use like any of these traps. That's ridiculous. This Ojama deck doesn't seem inter doesn't seem too good or interesting. Oh, okay. This this is usually what follows uh, my opponent's surrendering or connection lossing, which is it's good for your win loss ratio. I think not sure. I think it still counts it as a loss because yeah, see, he just he rage quit it out of the app um, completely. He didn't even surrender. He just closed the app. I still think it counts as a loss because it still counts as a win for me. Uh, so I still think it counts it as a loss for you in ranked, even though it is technically a DC. Not sure. I've only been playing Duel Links for a week, like I said. I'm, I'm not too familiar with, uh, with, the, uh, with the technicalities of that. But I do know that if you're already losing that turn, I feel like it's infinitely more valuable to just let yourself lose. Because if you surrender or DC, you don't get dual assessment points, and you don't get points towards leveling up your character. Like, you still get those, even if you lose. Now, notably, you get less, but you still get them. <laughs> and so, I think that, like, you, I think if you're going to lose that turn, if you're already in the act of losing, like, if you're literally losing to one action that is being performed, uh, then you should probably just definitely let that happen. I, at least that's my own personal opinion, because I'm, I'm in the business of leveling up characters, I'm not trying to waste time. Okay, I go first and we both gain ranks. Uh, these are those games that I really, really enjoy winning because he gets reset and he has to start over in terms of what he's, uh, what his rank is, and I don't. And this hand's actually really good for going first if he's playing, um, if he's playing like a conventional deck. We'll see. We'll see what's going on here. I would really hate for this to end up being like a Phoenix matchup because Phoenix is really irritating to try and play through but at the same time I've got Rush Recklessly and I could probably burn these traps uh, before Phoenix came out and uh, and started being a problem uh, in fact I know I could burn them but uh, and then Rush just allows me to attack over things but we'll see um, card for the soul is Phoenix damn it I didn't want to mess with this <laughs> Uh, the only thing that I need to worry about now is whether or not he has Fire King Island or not, which he probably does, honestly. Fire King Island is a 3 of in a 20 card deck. That's that's some pretty good odds. Oh, really? Setting a card and passing? Alright. Well, that means that's like a Yaksha, which means we're not going to attack into that. Uh, because we don't have access to a GB like Rediari, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> if we did, then it would be really good, but... Uh, so I will set this Laquari, and I will just pass my turn. I'm not, I'm not trying to trigger that Yaksha. I'm going to trigger that Yaksha on my terms, not his. <sighs> so this is going to be pretty touch and go and pretty stressful. These are both like tier three decks. Like six, Phoenix is only, Phoenix and GBs are only slightly. Ah oh, shit! And now that just really expedited how, uh, how quick I need to deal with this. What is that? Gale Lizard. All right. That's not exactly what I thought it was, but it's still it's a good thing I didn't attack it, because now I haven't given away any information about my deck. Um, if I had attacked it, it would have returned something to my hand, and then it would have been a problem. Uh, but there's so many things you have to respect in this matchup. Playing a GB deck against Phoenix, uh, it's so irritating. Because you've got to respect the Phoenix coming back and blowing out your back row. You've got to respect the... Um, you've got to respect the wild tornadoes that could be set... You've got to respect all that shit, and it's really agitating. Now, if he summons that Yaksha, which he's doing, good, and he attacks, he's going to attack into... I'm going to Draining Shield him first so that I gain life, uh, because I need to burn these cards anyway. Phoenix comes back next turn, and he's attacking with that. Okay. Very good. So I'll Draining Shield this, right? Um, so I gain 18, and then I'll... Uh, a wall of disruption, the Gale Lizard, so that I just, uh, his stuff gets really small. And now I can tag into Dimikari, um, and Dimikari is going to put a ton of pressure on my opponent because I've got the Rush Recklessly as well. Rush and Rear Yoku work super well with Dimikari because he attacks twice. Um, like, that's super valuable. Now, my opponent could have something like Sphere Karibo uh, in his hand. But, honestly, if he doesn't, then this game is really, really good off in my favor. 
I like that. Uh, but so we'll normal summon this. I don't need to worry about Phoenix this coming turn because it's going to come back and pop Fire King Island and then trigger itself again. But that's why I'm. That's why this matchup is annoying because it effectively heavy storms you twice while putting beaters on the board, um, and that's why that becomes a problem <laughs> against certain other decks. I'm going to attack with this Dimikari first to see if he does have a Sphere Karibo. If he does, hopefully this baits it. Because again, like I said, you do little tricks against your opponents and you get them. Um, okay, so that's 2,000. So now with this Dimikari, if this Dimikari attacks and it goes to damage step, I can just rush recklessly in damage step and uh, and then that'll just be the game. That'll just be 100% the game. Enter damage step. Hell yeah. You thought you was safe, but nah, rush recklessly is coming to get you. Um, so make sure I targeted the right one. Yes, I did. Very good. Um, and so now, that's just it. Game. Amazing. I thought this was going to be really, like, problematic, but no, I ended up playing that really, really well. Uh, but yeah, like, you just take advantage of people with this deck, especially if you came from regular Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, I remember playing GBs in 2008. Like, it's, it's been a minute, but I remember playing GBs, like, way back when. Um, and the same concepts that were good back then apply now, although twisted for the format that this, uh, that this, uh, game applies. Uh, but so let's see, we're 16 minutes in, so I can play at least one more before, uh, before we call this one off. I have ranked up, so that's good. Um, I've still gotta go through, I think, the Legend rank, and then I can get to King of Games, but, like, I'm just... Rush Recklessly is probably my favorite card in my deck right now, <laughs> because you just get to play it, and you just get to get people. Like, whether or not my opponent had a Sphere Karibo in their hand at that point and thought that they could save it or not, like... There's so many people that I just get with Rush Recklessly because I wait specifically until the damage step. Um, and then there are so many people that have cards like Mirror Wall and stuff like that and they don't wait until the damage step because they're a lot more casual of players. And if you're just really good at doing what you know you need to do, then you just get those people. Okay, so either you're just leveling up this character or... Hmm, I wonder if this is actually real or not, but regardless, we'll, we'll see what happens. So... I'll set this Econ, and I'll set this Dimakari. Ryoku is kind of weird. The Rush Recklessly is coming to my hand next turn, because I'm not doing any tagging out. Um, so, hmm. I wonder how this one's going to go. I'm definitely going to have a lot of attack modders. Uh, ah, setting a card. Interesting. wonder what matchup this is. He's playing a 30-card deck which is already a pretty smooth indicator of what's to come. Uh, but at the same time, there are definitely some decks that I feel like I would play 30 cards in as well, because cannot see how you could trim those down to 20. Uh, but that's just me. But So we'll go to the battle phase. I'll keep this rush in hand. Uh, I'll try to do some bestiary tactics. I've got the econ. A man-eater bug? Well, duelist! Um, so... There's no real... Okay, yeah, popping that one is correct, because at least then you take less damage. Uh, but now I'm going to tag into my Bestiari, and I don't think your Yami is a threat, but I could just pop it to just, like, counteract your skill and give you the big middle finger. But at the same time, I'll just go into Bestiari and start popping these back rows. Because I get to hide behind... Uh, I get to hide behind this Econ for a little bit of time as well. Uh, so it shouldn't be a big issue. Ah, Super Rush Headlong. Of w all the things to hit, that is definitely the card to hit. <laughs> like, man, that is the that is an anti-GB card if I ever did see one. Outside of, like, Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys. But even then, uh, like, again, that matchup is pretty easily handleable when you, uh, when you start messing around with it. But I'm drawing Draining Shield, which is good. Uh, that means that, depending on how this goes... I can set Rush, and I can set the Draining Shield next turn, and uh, if I run into something like an Econ, then I shouldn't have too big of an issue. Uh, but even if I do get, like, uh, like messed up by whatever this play string that I walk into is, uh, then I'm still going to have access into Draining Shield for a turn, even though I'm only going to be drawing Rush recklessly next turn. I, it'll, it'll allow me a turn or two to stabilize, uh, so this should be fine. Oh, and this attack is going through as well? Man, that Super Rush Headlong was such a good card to hit. So I'll tag this Bestiari out, 
um, into Laquari, just because it's bigger than anything that he would summon with the Yami out, at least as far as my knowledge goes. I think his normal summons are pretty pretty hard capped to the uh, 2000 range. Oh, a Floodgate Trap Pole. Okay, well, this Draining Shield is going to be worth its weight. And I shuffled my deck, and I still have Rush Recklessly on top of my deck. How agitating. Alright, card guard. Well then. Um, okay, so I can Draining Shield so that I keep this on the board. This is pretty big, so I think I'm okay with Draining Shielding this. Just to sort of buy a turn. But I definitely need to draw another monster because this is stuck down here because of Floodgate. And that's agitating. Agitating to a degree. Rush recklessly. And what's my next card? Econ. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, oh dear. Let's not, please. So if I draw this Econ, at least that'll also buy me a turn, but if I'm starting to use cards as one of trades to like just buy turns, that's that's not very good. That's that's the point where you start really losing games. Uh, but so okay, attacking this, I can't do anything with my rushes because they only affect attack. Um, then this card guard is gonna punch me for that 21 that I just stole from it, putting me back down to 4K. So that's fine. And come on. I just, I need information. That's what I need at this point. Impenetrable attack! <sighs> well, alright then. This is, uh, this is looking to be one of those unfortunate events of... Well, how many monsters are left in my deck? I think the Laquari is the only one that's in the grave. Uh, and in that case, there's seven monsters left in my 12-card deck. What is a man with Wajat? When you normal summon this card in during each your standby phases, pick it up and look at it and then return it to its original position. Alright, cool. <laughs> Alright, mate. Um, okay, so this Econ is going to not do anything. I don't think I need to. Well, I'm going to have to clear the zone, actually, for the impenetrable. That's kind of irritating. But, uh, okay, so this attacks, the card guard, I can econ that to defense position. And then the impenetrable attack buys me yet another turn. And that's... Ugh. Ugh. That's the, that's the problem with this deck, though. Is that if you're not playing, like, balance, um, or if you're not playing, uh, like, destiny draw, uh, you can get to the point where you just don't have monsters. And that becomes problematic. I'm glad that this is happening after I already ranked up, though. Uh, okay, Impenetrable. There's a Laquari. The Savior! Alright. That Laquari is gonna come in really hot. I hope so, at least. That other back row has done nothing to any of my uh, attacks thus far, so I'm hoping it's going to continue to be that way. Now, the Yomi ship is gonna be something that can uh, that could uh, uh, la, 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 that can kill my Laquari. Um, but I can also just tag into Mermello, pop that, and then I've got double rush recklessly for the Mermello that I tag into, uh, or I can tag into Bestiari, um, there's a couple different things, but so Wool Impenetrable for no damage, and then I'll draw this Laquari, this Laquari will attack, um, I'll have to Ryoku and then attack the, uh, well the card guard doesn't have any protection on it. So that's fine, uh, because the card guard doesn't get protection from its own counter, only the card that it puts a counter on gets protection. So that's fine and dandy. So yeah, Lakori here, my opponent could have something like Sphere Karibo. Uh, it's definitely something I should be respecting, but at this point I don't really have the ability to respect it because I've lost too many cards just trying to stay alive at this point. So uh, we'll go card guard onto Laquari, and he's already looked at this so he knows it's a rush recklessly so the question is whether or not that he looks at this one with uh, the widget man thing enter damage step he, nothing here all right cool um, the rushes would not have been game there so we're not gonna mess with that 
And then this can tag out into... Well, I could tag out into Mermello, actually. And that would be really good. Yeah, we'll tag into Mermello. Pop the, the man with Wajat thing. So he doesn't get information about what this set card is. And then if he attacks into the Mermello, like, that's just really big for me. Um, actually, no. I have to destroy this Yomi ship, or else he just suicides. Um, so yeah, I have to destroy the Yomi ship. Um, luckily, Rush is a static attack game um, until the end of the turn. Not for one battle, so that's fine. I'm drawing Wall of Disruption, which is also really good. I'm going to try and pull this one out of my ass. Uh, but so he gets to see, he's already seen this one, so he gets to see this one. He gets to see that there are two Rush Reckless Lees. <laughs> so he needs to have a monster that's got uh, 2200 attack to get over it. Otherwise, um, he's going to be uh, not dealing with things. I had to pop the Yomi ship. Had to, had to, had to. Because if I didn't pop the Yomi ship, even with the Rush Recklessly set, he could just attack, suicide into my uh, Mermillo. And then Mermillo would get popped because it killed Yomi ship in battle. And that'd be a problem. Oh, this man. A crass clown. Well, alright. Uh, la, 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 la. So let's see. Widget. Widget me, my man. What does that even mean? What is what is, what is this? What is Widget? I, I, there's a Google search coming on later in my life. I can tell. Um, okay, turn that to defense mode. Yeah, that's that's definitely how that one has to go. But so, if I I'm gonna burn both rush recklessly <laughs> on this fucking crass clown. Uh, but I'm drawing Bestiari, which is good. The thing is, my deck is really heavily monster-filled uh, at this point. Uh, so this is fine for me. I'm okay with this. So we'll attack this. I'll do double damage step uh, tactics. Uh, enter damage step. Effect of a card? Yes. So we'll use the rush on Mermello. And then I'll use the other rush on Mermello, since he knows what they are. He's not going to attack into them. He's not going to want to attack into this wall of disruption either. He's going to get to look at it and then he's going to be like, well shit, I don't, I can't play around that. I can't play around that card. Uh, we're at 27 minutes. This ended up being a lot longer of a individual game than I had expected. But that's fine. We can mess with this. Uh, but So Mermillo will go back. I'll summon Bestiari. And I'll pop his other face down. Just so that it doesn't cause any problems. Watch it be something like Wild Tornado and I just lose on spot. Let me know. Oh, it's a golden apples. Okay, All right, I'll take that. I'll take that trade. So you had Super Rush Headlong, which I popped, and then your other sets were golden apples, and uh, and then something else. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to do anything about this wall of disruption, my man. The Wajat can't attack over my Bestiari, and if you summon a monster, you can't attack over my Bestiari, and now Stray Lambs just gives me more food to attack into with my GBs. <laughs> this this game went so far in my favor just because of my ability to mess around. Okay, what's that? What did you just tribute set for? What did you just tribute set for? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> what did you tribute set for, my dude? If it's like Noble Man Eater Bug, I'm gonna cry. Um. Enter battle phase. Uh, I'm going to... I think I just passed my turn here, actually. Um, knowing that I'm drawing that Laquari, and knowing that something has to be 2600 to get over this, and then kill me, so it has to be higher. Yeah, I'm just going to end my turn. Um, arguably, it was not correct to summon that Mermello, but I got a little bit ahead of myself. But next turn, I get Laquari, which I could go into Nerokius. And Nerokius is pretty good. You're going to look at it again? Forget? All right. All right, my man. I feel you. You know what? This is my first Duel Links video. I don't care if it's a little long. I do not care at all, because I love this game. Oh, really? So it's nothing. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Well, I'll summon this. I'll go into Nerokius, because Nerokius is like that guy. He's literally just a massive kick in the ass. Um, now, my opponent has already used a Floodgate Trap Hole. I don't expect him to have multiples, uh, but even if he does, Nerokius 
is the card that I'm willing to risk this entire nonsense on because he deals with lots of threats. Uh, because of his effect to just cancel things out. That was a sewage in. Excuse me? What a what a what a play. Alright, well I'm gonna tag out this Nerokius. I was afraid of that being something spicy. But it turns out it was just not spicy. At all. Um So I'm gonna summon Bestiari and Laquari. And the Bestiari will pop this uh this set, and then the Laquari will just be big. So Bestiari pop this. And if it's something like a floodgate, I can just tag into Esadari next turn. What is that? Blast held by a tribute. I'm losing more and more respect for my opponent by the second. Are you, you're gonna look at it again, alright? Is this mandatory? No, it is mandatory, okay. He's not just doing it to try and tilt me. It's actually mandatory. <laughs> good, 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 good. I thought for a second that he was just trying to tilt my ass by looking at my things. Ooh, 28! Trance the magic swords, man! Well, that's not good. Um, well, if he attacks my Lakori, oh, he has to, he's gonna attack that. All right. Well, this Wall of Illusion isn't out to the trance because it makes it 2K. My Bestiari dies, and then this can attack over it. Not an ideal out, but it is an out. Um, so I can normal summon this Mermillo, and now I hard lose to a Sphere Karibo. If it's been if it's been held this entire game, then kudos to this man. But otherwise, I get to tag into Bestiari now off of this uh, off of this Mermello, and then I get to pop his uh, Yami, and then this game should be pretty sewn up. Because even though we're on the same like level of card economy, because I'm on two cards and he's drawing to two cards, uh, like he has to draw very specific cards to out my huge Laquari, or. Uh, or just nothing else happens. Uh, no, I do not wish to use Lacori's effect. I'm glad, I'm happy that it asks you twice. If you accidentally, like, back out, it's like, nah, do you really not want to activate this GV effect? <laughs> it, it makes it very, very well known that it thinks that you're stupid. Alright. Well then, I'm drawing this Mermello. He keeps drawing monsters that are beaters. I wonder if this back row is anything real. Uh, if it's not, then... Good shit, duelists. Um, we'll, we'll take the risk. We'll take the risk, summon the Mermello. Okay. Hmm. I have a feeling this is like Econ, and I'm just gonna lose to it. Please, no. Oh, no, please! <laughs> no! He's got a response window! Mirror wall! I lose! <laughs> to a top decked mirror wall! Well, all right, not much I can do about that one. But I'm not even I'm not even upset about it. That game lasted long enough. This man has a mirror wall, but he has a bunch of other horrible cards. Very interesting deck choice. I I, I don't know what to say about that one. But anyway, yeah, okay, that's that's fine. That is that is definitely fine. I'm okay with that one because I've already ranked up. If that was my like gain ranking match, I would have been a little bit more upset. But uh. But no, I'm already in my ranking thing, and I think that was my first game under the new ranking. So all I have to do is, like, it literally, like, resets me anyway. Uh, so, like, there's that, but... Anyway, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, sorry it's a little bit longer than, uh, than what people might, you know, expect. Uh, but basically, it's my first Duel Links video, and I want to do more of them, so I was okay with it being long. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, what is, uh, my thing that I'm doing here? This is what, where's my, uh... Where's my thing at? Oh, it's under search. That's right. Uh, this is my Duelist ID if you want to add me as a friend on Duel Links. My uh, username is Phoenix Flare, but this is my Duel Links ID because there's like six people with that name also. Um, so if you're interested, then definitely add me. As you see, I already have Based Iradium, the pity mod, as one of my friends. Uh, but otherwise, as you can see, yeah, days played, eight. <laughs> I haven't been playing Duel Links for very long. But anyway, if you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. And give me a hashtag Duel Links if you made it this far into the video. 
I'd love to know if you made it all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed Duel Links, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is obviously the best way to do so. It helps out a ton, and you'd have my eternal gratitude, as I've always said. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Alright, so now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, a lot more than you may ever know, and you have my eternal gratitude. You guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.